So today we're going to talk a little bit more about N-acetylcysteine, the glutathione precursor, and answer some questions that I've seen come up in the comments over the past several years. Like, should I take glutathione if I'm taking N-acetylcysteine? What is the best time to take N-acetylcysteine? And also I want to share with you some details regarding the virus that was circulating and is still circulating in some parts of the world and some potential benefits by taking an acetylcysteine. Again, not to cure, treat, or diagnose, or prevent any disease, but just as nutritional support. Um, let's start with that, and then we'll talk about the nuances about when do you take NAC, how much should you take, timing, and then should you take straight up glutathione or an acetylcysteine. So the title of the paper that we're gonna launch from here is where are we at with the use of an acetylcysteine as a preventative and adjunctive treatment for COVID-19? Again, we're not talking about treating anything, we're just talking about supporting whole body health from a nutritional perspective in today's video. So N-acetylcysteine has been recognized in the context of infections because it does a few different things. The first thing that N-acetylcysteine was, you know, it's essentially a cysteine precursor, which is the rate-limiting amino acid of the glutathione tripeptide, which is comprised of glycine, glutamine and cysteine. Now I said rate limiting because you need, you, you need all the amino acids, but the rate limiting amino acid to make glutathione is cysteine. So what you're getting here is you're pushing cysteine to make glutathione. So that's why an acetylcysteine uh, has been talked about a lot. But why it's utilized and a lot of people recommend it during the context of an active infection is because it offers antioxidant properties. And there's a lot of free radical or oxidative stress that can be neutralized by glutathione and taking an acetylcysteine to increase glutathione during the context of an infection. Because part of how the immune system actually helps you know, your body when you are infected, whether it's bacterial or viral, is by increasing free radical stressors. Now that can become a little bit excessive in the context of COVID-19 and can cause collateral damage. And so that's why people have speculated that glutathione and, and NAC can be helpful. But there's a new mechanism that I wanna uh, talk to you about and that is related to the clotting cascade. Now this is also important in the context of the active infection but the other things that are being talked about a lot because we know clotting uh, can be a challenge here. So I just wanna share with you because this was new to me and it has to do with how glutathione can decrease platelet aggregation and clotting. And that to me was news and I think it's, it's helpful. So I just wanna share with you just one piece of this and I'll share this up on the screen here. An acetylcysteine treatment significantly reduced 14-day and 28-day mortality in patients with severe COVID-19. NAC improved the uh, blood oxygen to uh, catalyze oxygen ratio over time and decreased white blood cell c reactive protein D-dimer and lactate dehydrogenase levels. So one of way to approximate clotting mechanisms in the body is a blood test called D-dimer, okay? And so NAC has been shown to reduce D-dimer levels in people that have an active infection. Now, how is it working mechanistically? It could be having to do with the, what we talked about, and I'll just, let me just pause. Free, when you hear free radicals, it's the same as oxidative stress. Free radicals, free radical stress is synonymous with oxidative stress. So again, part of how glutathione benefits the body, number one, is by decreasing, what is called ox stress, okay? So this is, oop, uh, this is a free radical stress. Uh, another mechanism here is by increasing uh, phase two detoxification. So for getting rid of heavy metals, pollutants, persistent organic pollutants, um, all of those sort of things, plastics through the phase two pathway, cysteine is, is needed there as well. But it turns out, that the free rat radical or oxidative stress neutralizing aspect of glutathione is particularly helpful in the context of clotting mechanisms. Okay, so that, I think that's helpful. Now, you might think, well, when am I at risk for having a clot? It could be in the post-infection window. It could be in the window after getting other treatments. It could also be in a point of time, for example, after a meal or when you're traveling. So prolonged sitting blood stagnation, for example, Let's say you have like a sprained ankle, and so you're icing it, you're resting it, you're not, tra you're, not, you're not moving your body, you're not moving your blood or your lymphatic system. Let's say you're going on a road trip. It's gonna be, you're gonna be sitting for 12, 14 hours. You're going on a plane to see your in-laws in Europe or whatnot. So that could be a situation where you might consider taking an acetylcysteine because it, it can, it appears to affect by way of reducing oxidative stress, clotting mechanisms, okay? Uh, also, if we think about timing, 
you know, every nutrient, if we think about even exercise or food or whatever, chrononutrition, and, and that is the biology of integrating the circadian clock system with nutrition, I think it, it really applies here to antioxidants, uh, particular and uh, glutathione specifically, because it turns out that you want to avoid taking antioxidants during the day when your metabolism is most active. Now, I'm drawing uh, th this research, extrapolating this from animal model studies that have shown, at least in animals that have a really high daytime metabolic rate, namely hummingbirds, when those birds were given antioxidants during the daytime compared to the evening time, there was actually, it counteracted some of their favorable metabolic processes in the body. And so since that study was published in 2014, various scientists have thought, you know what, we should really consider when we take antioxidant type supplements or compounds, and we should generally recommend those in the evening time or before bed, because it turns out that you don't wanna have them during the day. Okay, so you might be saying, well, how much N-acetylcysteine, again, the glutathione precursor, do I need to make glutathione? Well, various studies, if we just um, talk about dosing here, so we'll talk about dose, um, I would say between 800 and 1600 milligrams, okay? So that's gonna be the dose here. You can take it all at once, capsules or powder. I generally recommend taking it with glycine as well. There's a few different reasons for that. Glycine, of course, is part of the glutathione tripeptide. Also, because you're taking it at night, glutathione uh, and also glycine uh, help with sleep. And so glycine contributes to GABA synthesis. Glycine is calming. So it's really affordable and it can make the, the sulfur kind of pungent part of the NAC taste a little bit better if you're taking it in a powder. Uh, anytime you're taking over 800 milligrams of something, you're going to hit this gram level. You know, 1,000 milligrams is one gram. It's always cheaper to go with a powder if you're thinking about supplements because it costs more to run those encapsulation machines and put them into capsules and the whole thing. So anytime you can go with a powder, you're going to save on money. Everyone's trying to save money, on, save money right now. So you can take between 800 and 1,600 milligrams at night. Look, if you go out to the bar with your friends, you have a couple of drinks, you have some wine, it's, it, I think it's a good measure to take some uh, NAC after you get home. You know, that's a good time to take it. And you know, if you have a little glycine in there, it can help you with sleep as well. You could take it after prolonged sitting, prolonged travel, or if you get an infection, you get an injury that reduces your mobility, you might wanna consider an acetylcysteine. But um, I thought this paper was really quite interesting. It's a short read. I'll put this in the show notes and also links to products that I, that I recommend as well and a coupon code. But um, really interesting to know that part of the mechanisms by which NAC might be helpful in the context of an infection has to do with clotting in addition to reducing oxidative stress. So I thought you might want to be updated on that. Let me know what you think in the comments and when you take an acetylcysteine and what you notice with this. Um, another biomarker that you might want to look at uh, to consider if you're evaluating like, hey, do I even need an acetylcysteine? I know a lot of you test your vitamin D. I know a lot of you test your omega-3 index. All of that is good. Another biomarker here, since we're done talking about oxidative stress, is called GGT. This is a liver function test, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. So we're going to go GGT, okay? This is, again, on our blood work cheat sheet. It's on the front page of our website, highintensityhealth.com. GGT is a marker of increased glutathione turnover. So when your body is actively making glutathione because you have, say, environmental toxins that you're ingesting, arsenic, lead, mercury, cadmium, things like that, in processed food, in unfiltered water, in your carpet, right? Your body is going to figure out a way to get rid of those things. And so it's going to increase glutathione production. Gamma glutamyl transpeptidase literally transfers sulfur from the N-acetylcysteine or dietary cysteine into your cells to make glutathione. So when this is elevated, it doesn't necessarily totally indicate that there's a glutathione deficiency. It indicates that there is increased churn or turnover of glutathione in the body, meaning that you probably should support that nutritionally. So um, when GGT is generally over levels of 30, it's units per liter, uh, international units, IU per liter, that is a good indicator like, hmm, we need to support this from a nutritional standpoint. Let's ingest more cysteine, okay? So consider that as well. Um, the other test that I recommend for your liver is the ALT and AST, but GGT is a little bit more specific to glutathione churn. Now, let's finish off with, what about just taking straight up glutathione, okay? Well, 
That is certainly an option. There's all sorts of different ways to go about this. You have S-acetylglutathione, which is an acetylated oral glutathione. And you might say, well, why do we have all these things? Liposomal glutathione? You have all these different ways to sort of protect glutathione because it turns out glutathione is very sensitive, particularly to all the caustic agents in the gut. We're talking hydrochloric acid, bile salts, pepsin, microbes, all of this, right? So there's ways to circumvent the poor absorption and the real sensitivity to glutathione. And so you, need, you either need to add a liposome onto it or acetylate it to increase the absorption and pre prevent it from being oxidized and so forth in the gut. Um, those forms are out there. If you've been getting results with that, that's fine. I will tell you after working in this space for now almost 17 years, you're going to get pretty good results and it's going to be a fraction of the cost of just taking an acetylcysteine, especially in a powdered form because it's very affordable. Glutathione can run you between $50 and $100 per month. NAC is going to cost you maybe a dollar a day or 80 cents a day. So um, if you want to pay two to three times the cost to get acetylated glutathione or uh, liposome or things like that, that's fine. No problem. If, if that's what you like, it's all good. Um, but I can tell you that you will allow yourself a little bit more money for better food, for vitamin D, for protein powder or collagen if you save on N-acetylcysteine uh, as a precursor. So that's it for today's video, friends. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button. Definitely share this with a friend or family member. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you decide to download and check out this paper, if you learned something new like I did. As always, I'm grateful that you tuned in all the way through and we'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.